Well, good morning, everybody. And um, so my name is Michael Ingeman. I uh, my, my day job, I work uh, as a partner in Think Hospitality, where we advise uh, restaurants and uh, hotel groups and investors on, on, on strategy development in the restaurant sector. But I'm also a non-executive director and chairman in a, in a number of companies uh, in the food sector. And one of them is Nordic Harvest, which is a, uh, one of the biggest uh, vertical farms in Europe, uh, located in, in Denmark. Um, James already said it. So um, climate change, war in Europe, and uh, globally disrupted uh, supply chains. I need to say more. What we're going to talk about now is, is one of these topics that will have a profound impact on how we will uh, work in the restaurant sector in the future, but pro probably even more importantly, also how we feed the world. And one of the uh, one of the solutions to, to this is, uh, well, we'll probably need to, to eat more locally produced food. And that is not as easy as it sounds. So one of the other companies I'm involved with is the founder of uh, a restaurant in Copenhagen called Noma. And uh, Noma opened about 20 years ago with the idea that it would produce, uh, serve food, only uh, based on local produce from the Nordic region. And everybody laughed at it. So it's going to last for half a year, close down, and, and then move on. But uh, since then, it's been named uh, the world's best restaurant five times uh, um, by, by the, the 50 best. And it has inspired a lot of change, both in the, the local region and, and across the world. But for this to work, we will need to, to see changes in the whole value chain and in the whole ecosystem of how we produce and, and supply food. And very luckily, we have two of the people in the forefront of this development, of this transformation with us today, Emma Banks and Atul Chopra. And I will let you um, introduce yourselves because you have uh, uh, quite impressive backgrounds. I want to get it all in, in there. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here in Riyadh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia today. Um, Emma Banks, Vice President of Strategy and Development for Hilton Amir, which is a glorified title for everything to do with openings, development, concept creation, uh, third-party relationships, and day-to-day -day operations of Hilton restaurants and bars across Europe, Middle East, and Africa which is spanning about 70 countries at present and just under 600 properties uh, managed and franchise portfolio. So that's me. Uh, good morning, uh, Atul Chopra is my name, founder of Fresh On Table, a catalyst uh, with Agritech strong uh, interface. Uh, our motion, mission is buy local, support local, help your local community, and in the process deliver maximum nutrition, minimum emissions. Well, welcome. Um, so, Emma, uh, this topic, I mean, we, we can all agree that it's important, but uh, I think that people have been talking about this for years. And, and you have this massive big business you took over, uh, you, the reigns about two, three years ago. Can you say, how has this developed as, as part of your strategy? And, and how do you see this as, as, uh, in, in, in the sector in, in general right now? As I work for um, a world, you know, a global uh, hospitality operator, um, protecting our environment and the communities we operate in is absolutely key and paramount. And hospitality plays a huge part of protecting the communities and uh, countries we operate in. And food and beverage plays, you know, a massive part in that. So Hilton's ES goal, ESG goals are all under our travel with purpose strategy and the food and beverage business um, plays a huge part in our travel with purpose uh, strategy around uh, reducing carbon emissions, carbon footprint uh, by uh, a strategic direction of sourcing more locally and reducing waste at the same time and other such um, uh, strategies around reduction of plastics, but um, reducing, uh, uh, increasing local uh, uh, purchasing and reducing waste are key for us. 
And it's interesting to hear also from you, too, because you, you developed your companies also quite, quite recently. Uh, so, so how has the, the, uh, the sector uh, taken to, to your services? Well, I think the response couldn't have been more overwhelming as we are seeing it right now. Uh, you know, when we started our journey in 2019, there was practically zero awareness about local farming in UAE. Uh, I think the pandemic helped a lot in the process because certainly there was a paradigm shift as to what's available locally as well. And uh, I think since then and now, we worked with more than 250 fine dining restaurants and hotels as part of their responsible hos hospitality initiative. And besides that, we have a partnership with Silal, which is Abu Dhabi's farmer uh, center, and something like 70 small and medium local farms. So we do about 250 horeca deliveries a day, at the minimum, uh, with about 2,000 SKUs, which have really developed a lot in the last couple of years. So I don't think the demand could have been as profound as ever before. I think it might even come as a surprise to people that there are so many local producers who can, who can do this. Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, even when I talk to people who are born in UAE, even they can't believe that this all exists. But uh, the proof of the pudding lies in its eating, and you've got to see for yourself what is being developed. See, technology today is an enabler. You can practically grow anything anywhere. We have a fantastic fish farm uh, right in Dubai's backyard, doing one of the best salmon in the world, hamachi as well, just basically stimulating uh, the Atlantic and the Pacific. And of course, a lot of leafy greens, a lot of fantastic vegetables on the wine as well. So it's, it's just an ever-growing sector. It's amazing. So, Emma, so, so embarking on this change, I mean, it, it, it's, there must be risks also, you would consider. So what, what are some of the, the major... Uh, issues that you need to consider if you are uh, uh, an F&B brand that, that will then uh, really shift over and buy more locally? Well, I think one of the, one of the key um, criteria is, you know, we have a responsibility to protect um, our, our owners and guests and team members. So it's very important that the food, the produce that we bring in goes through our processes of health and safety, due diligence, and HACCP. So, you know, you, you can't just have executive chefs wandering into the desert, into local farms, and just filling the boots and driving back to a hotel. So, and plus, they don't have the time, you know. So we've got a huge infrastructure, mostly around compliance and safety and due diligence. And obviously, there's commercials to consider as well. And the perception historically was it was just too difficult to buy local, it was fraught with, uh, with operating issues, um, you know, and it was cheaper to buy imported. And yes, at one time, that was the case. But as Atul said, technology is an enabler. And we at Hilton, as we have to uh, increase our basket of local produce, we um, embarked in... Uh, December, we embarked on um, the growth of the UAE for the Golden Jubilee, where we started in September, where we signed uh, uh, a deal with Atoll to supply us with local produce for a totally locally inspired menu across our hotels in celebration of the global, global, Golden Jubilee in UAE. It was so successful that we worked with our supply chains during that period and um, identified 19 SKUs of the 2,000. So we've got more to go, as you can imagine. And um, we now signed a deal where we locked in 19 SKUs, locked out the imported ones so the chefs didn't have access to it. And actually now uh, we buy locally just across those uh, 19 SKUs in 22 hotels, 350 tonnes of produce. But as, as we're here in, in Saudi, I'm really pleased to say that in our 16 hotels in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we are now working with NADEC, which anybody here in, in, from, from Saudi will be more than familiar with, that we are now in a trial stage of purchasing 200 tons of tomatoes with NADEC locally. We are also looking at securing, um, we're, in fine, we're in contract negotiations with looking at securing all our olive oil to be grown locally. People not, may not realize, but Saudi has a fabulous um, olive growing capacity. We're looking at sourcing uh, local seafood and other produce here in Saudi Arabia as well. And 
we're also looking at doubling down in six key markets, Egypt, KSA, as I said, UAE, um, Qatar, and then the UK and Spain as well. Because obviously covering 70 countries, I'm, I'm really having to focus and double down where I see some big opportunities for us. I think that's really, really interesting. Because what you're saying is also that, that, that you have a huge impact on, on the whole chains. And, and with, with, with the 75 hotels in the pipeline here in, in Saudi alone, I mean, you are a major player. And, and I mean, it, it, t it takes this kind of commitment from big players to actually move the whole industry. So, so maybe at all you can take a, talk a little bit about how do you make sure that, that, that local growers who suddenly see themselves being uh, faced with, with, with orders for several hundred tons, I mean, how can they do that? I mean, and, and how will this, this kind of collaboration help them do that? Well, absolutely. I think the point which Emma mentioned earlier, you know, I think we brought some kind of semblance in order to this market because one key attribute of the horeca industry is consistency. Besides, of course, quality and the commercials and so on and so forth. Uh, the good news is there's no dearth of capital in this part of the world. There's a lot of money uh, and there's also a huge focus on food security. So the governments obviously want that more and more local farming should come up. And we've seen, for instance, the UAE market, for instance, the reliance on imported is going down drastically from 90% to I would say more like about 80-85% now and we think by 2025 it could go down to as much as 70% uh, of imported. But uh, to your point, I, I think what we have to do as a catalyst is to ensure that the farms get all the right data inputs. So one of the big things we do is we harness a lot of data, uh, we share the data with the farms and also then encourage them with a lot of new product development. Uh, I think we can say in all humility we have done some fantastic work with regards to, for instance, Brussels sprouts, as an example, strawberries, blueberries, you know, which were never heard of in that part of the world, but now the quality and the, and the, and the consistency which is coming around is just making us more and more confident uh, because, uh, you know, when you have 350 tons of commitment to a group like Hilton, which is absolutely gratifying, but at the same time, it comes with a lot of responsibility. So, you know, we have to make sure that everything happens in a clockwise manner and yeah, I think so far so good, uh, and we hope that this will only improve further. Yeah, I think that it had, it had to be a bit of a leap of faith. Um, you know, we, we had the growth of the UA menu where we obviously had time to trial it on a reduced capacity, but ultimately, you know, Atul and I kind of symbiotically held hands and and we're like right we're going to do this you know that you know we 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 blocked a good commercial deal for the hotel and uh, operators and the owners uh, we made sure the consistency and the quality was there but ultimately there's there's always a little bit of a risk and teething issues but we worked hard with our chefs and ultimately you know i came out very vocally and said you know the big boys and girls have to get behind this and you just have to go through you have to roll your sleeves up you have to do the work you have to support the local communities that you work in and just grind it out and support it and you know some of the chefs whinged we told them to be quiet you know and we just got on with it and you know i'm so pleased to say atoll's got some amazing statistics of he's got a fantastic widget that tells me you know how much carbon emission we've saved how many millions of miles already we've saved so um more to be done but it, it is a bit of a, a leap of faith as well as a calculated risk and you have to find the right partners so I think the ESG goals are absolutely prominent for everybody because this is the way the world's going to move and this is not something which is temporary, I think is here to stay. And you know, there was a, again a debate that is it just a mumbo jumbo that people really want uh, uh, too sustainable food on the table or is it just a fad? But I, I don't think so. I think uh, everybody now is very interested in the story. They want to know where is the sourcing, where is the food coming from? How fresh is it? Uh, is it something which is traveling millions of food miles, which actually shouldn't, because a lot of stuff is actually available in our backyard. So yeah, I think this is getting very, very, very prominent. And thanks to all the encouragement and partnership with uh, Hilton and Emma, uh, I, I think uh, the farms are also now increasing the capacity, which is impacting the commercials, the price also dropping. So it's no longer the same gap as it was earlier. 
uh, and of course pandemic has also helped with the supply chains and all that. So we are seeing a very, very interesting shift uh, towards local much more. Yeah. Thanks. And then I'm, I'm, you, you hinted on something and you just had to push your chefs maybe a little bit. I think in general, I mean, how, how do you cope with the, the whole communication issue? Because you have to communicate, I guess, to the, to, the, to the staff who are used to working one way, but also guests who are used to seeing some sort of, of, of menus. Um, it wasn't so much, it, I suppose with the chefs, it was more, you know, them having, having the faith that the orders took consistency, the volumes, you know, because it was a big thing to go to, you know, such a big volume and a big basket. So making sure they arrived, the consistency was there, the quality was there. But ultimately, the chefs love cooking with local ingredients because that's what guests and, and travellers are demanding. People want authentic experiences. People are so engaged when we speak to them. Some of our hotels, I was in Cairo last week, we've actually got a hydrophonic farm in the restaurant. We go, the, the team members cut uh, 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 microgreens for the guests. So people are really engaged about it. So, but, but the other thing is, is um, you know, David Singleton, I think, is coming on a panel shortly to talk about people and talent. You know, we know that talent retention and attrition and the war on talent is huge. Well, you know, we are now recruiting Gen Z and upcoming Gen Alpha into the hospitality business. And, and thank God, because I think they're going to fix a lot of the ills. But, you know, they are really, really interested in working for companies with a purpose, companies that do good. And you find that your team members and colleagues are hugely engaged around local produce, sustainability, protecting the planet, protecting the environment, protecting the communities that they work and operate in. So, you know, it's not only for your owners, your operators, your ESG goals, doing the right thing for the planet, it also helps with your guest interaction, guest engagement, chef's engagement and gratification, but also ultimately, you know, Gen Z and Gen, Gen Alpha are hugely engaged around this, and that's the future employment market. So I think, you know, getting that message across to the front line, they absolutely love it, and they love to speak to guests about it. Cool, and, and, and um, does this work? Yeah, it works. Um, so, that's all. Where do we go from here? I mean, you just started your, 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 your two years, three years into, to, uh, into transformation of a food industry. So where, when we sit here in, in a few years' time and, and evaluate how it all went, where do you think we'll be by then? So I think one will be constant innovation. Uh, you know, that's something which can never stop. Uh, so we are bringing in more and more best practices and automation in the whole quality processes. For instance, as a catalyst, it's our duty to ensure that whatever goes to the chef finally is all screened. So we are moving away from uh, manual screening, for instance, to more of lenses and stuff like that. Metaverse is something I see as a big thing coming because, you know, instead of having a chef to drive to a farm uh, in 50 degrees, probably bring the farm uh, to our facility. Uh, something that's what we're working on and we're working very closely with both uh, Microsoft, as well as uh, with Amazon uh, on those things. And I think also would be, of course, an expansion uh, because this is the market and this is a dream market for us. You know, I would give my right hand to be here and uh, this is my second visit in the past three weeks. So, you know, if, if we, we definitely would want to be expanding our footprint. Incidentally, this is not just GCC, but we're also getting a lot of pull from even Europe uh, because uh, freshness, uh, sustainability is not just confined to this region, it's, it's I think, on top priority of every nation right now. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. We have a few minutes for questions, if there are any. Otherwise, I have more. But I speak, really. Um, did anybody hear me? <laughs> uh, so uh, I have uh, so much high um, admiration for what I just heard, and I would love to be working with both of you. So well done of uh, all of the you know uh, fantastic work that has been uh, going on uh, in the UAE, and we would love for this um, uh, development to happen in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, one of the things I was getting from 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 one of the things I was
it's, it's your energy. <laughs> hello, hello. Sorry. One of the things I was hoping to call out if I got the chance on the panel was, you know, um, in, at Hilton, we're operating in, in 70 markets across EMEA. And, you know, if there are investors or technology platforms out there that are looking, you know, for innovation and partnership and want to speak to me seriously, you know, similar to Fresh on Table or want to support Fresh on Table coming into other markets that we operate looking at the successful model that we've managed to execute in the UAE. We're more than keen to do it because we really, really want to work within our communities and we really want to support local food and beverage strategies in, in all the communities we operate in. It is in our 2030 goals to, in, to increase our local purchasing basket um, across thousands and thousands and thousands of SKUs, you know, that at the moment we're operating just short of, um, uh, you know, a billion dollar business here in, in food and beverage across, across EMEA. So, you know, hundreds and hundreds of restaurants and bars across the region. So I'm really keen to... Uh, look at any opportunities there. I think there's an invitation to everybody here for a billion dollar company uh, asking for collaborators. So, um, any other questions? Otherwise, I'd like to ask you, well, what are some of the problems that you've encountered? Any problems? I mean, it, it, it seems like a, a smooth ride, was it? A lot. <laughs> a lot. I think the first and foremost is the whole mindset sometimes. Uh, Especially, and I hate to say this for the procurement, uh, you know, because the procurement typically likes to benchmark you with uh, something which is a legacy. Uh, you know, I've been buying Brazilian chicken, for instance, at such price, and you know, you're trying to push a local chicken, all it be sustainable, locally grown, whatever. So that's a huge, huge, huge issue. But thanks to the push, which <laughs> which comes from here, you know, we are able to address it to an extent, but still a long way to go. Frankly, I think the mindset is a problem. Uh, second thing is also the consistency again. Uh, I think that's something which the more and more you talk about it actually is, is, is very, very critical uh, because uh, the, you know, sometimes the farms don't even understand that how critical it is that if they fail to deliver, it's mission critical. So what we have done is to hedge in some ways to have at least three options for every SKU. Uh, so that works. And of course, last but not the least is uh, nature to an extent, uh, because you know sometimes the temperatures go to such highs that even the greenhouses uh, have a challenge, uh, and you know you still can't do everything hydroponically. Uh, so, yeah, I mean these are some of the issues which we see, frankly. And I, th I think I think one I think one of the best things that we've seen is oh goodness gracious, I think one of the I think one of the best things we did was. <laughs> With Fresh on Table, we um, had a fair where we displayed, it's on now, we displayed, we displayed all the produce, uh, the fruits and vegetables, the Never fish, mind, the we can hear her. Okay, to, to, to all our chefs and all our general managers, and they couldn't believe the quality of what could be delivered, and I think that was a catalyst moment when we actually had a food and produce fair in one of the hotels, and it was just such an aha moment to taste sashimi grade fish that had come from our own backyard in the UAE, and we were all eating it raw, and the chefs were just blown away. So I think that was a catalyst moment, and on that story, and my inability to press a button, I'll, um, I'll be quiet. Thank you. I see you come through uh, loud and clear without the microphone as well. Um, what, what, what do you see now as a big challenge? We, we, we have uh, uh, all the problems of, of uh, deliveries from, from Ukraine and we have uh, uh, the other disruptions of, of, of the supply chain. Do you, how do you, do you think that, that, that you can just keep going and growing and, uh, and, and, and replacing all these other producers? And, and, and how do you take a step back maybe from, from the long-term uh, sustainability, but also the short-term uh, food security situation? How do you deal with that? No, so I think both go hand in hand. You know, you, you, food security and, and the development is, is just part and parcel of the same thing. 
to give you a perspective on the Ukrainian crisis, for instance, a lot of eggs used to come to UAE from Ukraine earlier. And now, of course, with the disruption, guess what? Everybody started looking at local eggs, which would have never happened before. So that's good news. Yes, we do have issues with grain and all that, but that's something which we can't do anything anyways locally. Uh, but uh, I think there's no stopping, frankly, uh, from where we are. Uh, I think the number of SKUs will only increase further. Uh, there's more investment which is going to come in farming. And more and more support we get from Horeca partners like Hilton, I think is just going to make the world much better uh, in every which way. Be it be carbon emissions, be it be freshness, nutrition value, and so on and so forth. So it's, again, you know, as I said earlier, buy local, support local, help your local community. Yeah. Thank you very much. We ended on, on, on time, more or less. And uh, I'm sure that you can catch our panelists here afterwards if you want to have more questions or you want to get in contact with some of these uh, people here as suppliers or partners. Thank you. Thank you.